Raj, I, you know, one of the things we have now is that great luxury of hindsight. Hey. We've got 20 years that this place has been up and running, and we've watched uh, a couple million people go through the door. And so we can think back now to the early and mid 1980s when this was was really a dream and in a few the eyes of a few people that we could actually build this spectacular center here and, and interpret a an aboriginal site to the public which isn't something done very often as you know uh, so looking back over 20 years I think that Head Smashed In has probably had a big impact on a lot of visitors I think it's made a lot of friends for itself but I'm sort of interested I guess in your perspective from from an aboriginal point of view if you if you can look at say a legacy is there some kind of a a legacy that we now have to this place that 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 we can put out there and say this is what this place has accomplished in 20 years this is what we've done with the money and the time that we spent jeez you know uh you look at it it smashed in i agree uh there was a lot a lot of planning a lot of discussion and visiting with the old timers that went into Hit Smashed In. And if you look at Hit Smashed In now, I think one of the things that is important is that we've established a uh, an icon that identifies who we are as First Nations. Mm -hmm. that, that anybody can come and feel comfortable to visit. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's rooted into the, the First Nation community of, of the Plains hunting tribes. It's so rooted that I think that the legacy can't stop there. It's got to keep going. It's, as I was saying, it's evolving. But uh, it's evolving in a way that we never foreseen at the beginning. That's right, yeah. We foreseen a legacy where we can bring the kids to see the exhibits and talk to them about their ancestors and, and the culture that existed here. Those are the legacies that, that we looked at at the time. And we're, even at the time when we, when we looked at it as a learning center for our young people, I think one thing that evolved was the fact it was, became a ceremonial place. Mm -hmm. So being a ceremonial place for some of the elders to have their ceremonies, the children to learn, I think those are the steps that, that happen and those are the legacies that are going to be there all the time. But when we look at future legacies, I think we got to start looking at one of the things that you mentioned a while ago and I think is important where we can actually do some research into the oral culture, not only to the artifacts but to the stories to the language and even some of the practices that exist whether it's drive lane ceremonies buffalo stone ceremonies i think those are important even even the film that they use at head smashed in with the buffalo stone ceremony that's got some impact on how you sit what a buffalo stone looks like and so on but if you put the stories to it and bring our kids to understand our Aboriginal used to understand the validation system. Mm -hmm. I think we've got so much more legacies to come out of it smashed in. But for the last that we've left, you know, the old people have left their marks through stories, through songs, through artifacts. They've this is a link to the, the future, and and our young kids can learn. And uh, I think that that's important. But I think that. We only just started, and we wouldn't know where it's gonna end. That's really uh, true. It, you know, we, 20 years looks like a long time now, but this building and the story will be here for 50 years, another 100 years, and imagine how that will evolve. It's something you said at the beginning there was really true. That I think all of us entered this kind of like babes. You know, we nothing like this really had ever been done before. This in terms of taking a site of this importance and interpreting it and the cultures collaborating and doing it, it was almost unique probably in North America at the time. And so we didn't know what it was going to become. Nobody did, you know. We knew we'd have a building, we knew it would open its door, and then after that we'll see what happens. And in the years since then, as you say, it's become so much more of a ceremonial place that was never envisioned. 
Your dad opened his medicine bundle here. We've had ser we've had marriages here. We've had funerals here. We've had p face paintings here. We've had all night smokes here. On and on, you know, that it's become a, a focus for Blackfoot culture that nobody ever envisioned at the time we opened our door. And I can't be, I couldn't be more pleased about that, you know, that it's, it started off as a government run building and it's become, it's transformed into sort of a native operated and interpretive and cultural center really. And no one knew at the time that was going to happen. I think one of the things that we're looking at is um, we have a culture that was uh, almost completely colonialized into another culture. But to preserve that culture, we were looking for partners. And at that time, with your help and Bill's help and the old man, the people that worked in Head Smashing, that believed in Head Smashing, they wanted to isolate an institution that would preserve and protect and renew our culture. And that partnership was established at that time. I feel that with the old people and the, uh, even the government that was here, they, they established that partnership at Head Smashton. And now that w it was just in its infancy. And we don't know where it's going to go from here. And I feel good about it because it's going to go a long ways. I, I, I'm involved with another partnership between the Treaty 7 tribes and the Calgary Stampede, which started in 1912. They didn't know where it was going. The, the Stampede invited the Indians, even though it was for tourism, but the Indians went, uh, went to Stampede, and it was at the, the, the heightened time of colonialism happening to them. So they went to the Stampede to preserve, preserve their culture. They went with preserving their culture, but Stampede wanted to use them as a tourism. But that partnership was established, and today, that stampede partnership with the First Nation is as strong as ever. Yeah. And I see Head Smash didn't go in the same way because at 25 years ago it was a time we're looking at, we we're just renewing our culture and letting us speak our language and having our ceremonies again. And we're looking for a partner to, or an institution that'll protect mm -hmm. what was so fragile. We've saved a lot and we started evolving. And I, I see other centers around the world, or even in Canada, that are gonna come to Head Smash and say, where's that unique partnership? Where did it come from? That's what we want. Mm -hmm. And that's where value is built at Head Smash. I think, I, I hope that's the direction that, that Head Smash is gonna go to.